I take it you're not a fan then of uh, nasomaxillary expanders. Is that safe to say? In, in children, in children, yes. In adults, it doesn't happen. Mm. So what's your approach to, to, to widening maxillas? I think when people think of jaw surgery, they think of jaw surgery as advancing the jaws, you know, bimax surgery, uh, Lafort cuts and BSSO cuts, mm. or even your IMDO procedure, which is sort of a mandibular advancement distraction procedure. Mm. But people tend to think you know, of the skeletal expanders, like the MSE is providing the, the transverse expansion uh, first. Right. Okay. So yeah. uh, how, how do you, well, because of course the transverse expansion helps to improve the nasal airway by splitting the roof of the mouth, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the floor of the nose. So yeah. it's nice to get a little bit of that. Um, what, what, what do you do about that? Okay. Well, we've got two holes. You separate them. There's still two holes. <laughs> Don't get bigger. <laughs> the same volume. You're just getting the, the stuff inside still occupies that volume. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. So you're saying that expanding the floor of the nose doesn't necessarily expand the nasal doesn't, breathing tubes. Doesn't do. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> How can it? It's just imagination, right? For, for you to be able to fundamentally understand it, you, you'd have to take a, and not a cone beam, you'd have to take a CT scan. And a CT scan in a, 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 in a person that's lying on their back, not when they're awake and they're erect, because 12 hours of the day is spent on your back asleep, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you just count the minutes that you're, you're lying on your back. Now, if you go fix, there are two holes, you know, literally two nostrils. Now, they might be pinched, and you might say, well, I can hold them open like that. But it's still a, it's still a, a potential space. You're not increasing tissues or anything like that. But, but, but past this wobbly thing on the end of your face is rigid structures. They're surrounded and imbibed and intruded by rigid structures. And... In effect, you're just displacing those structures. The, the tubes remain the same. Mm -hmm. So expanding... Does that about it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it might just... It, it might widen the, the nostrils at, at the best. But that that's... Uh, even that's debatable. So we have, for example, Dr. Casey Lee who's doing the ease right. procedure where he's doing this posterior uh, yeah. nasomaxillary expansion and he's showing charts that show that demonstrate improved nasal so airflow. You're talking about your upper, your upper jaw is like this and, he, and he's expanding the back. Correct. It's right. Is what it, some people that, refer right. to as like a reverse cone, a reverse cone type yeah, of expansion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he calls it the ease, right? It's called a posterior sum. Posterior surgical assisted rapid maxillary expansion, right? um, and and you can give it a name, you can give it an acronym. It's just marketing, um, and I thoroughly explain it in my book. Um, there's a whole chapter dedicated to it, and there is no other book that explains it all except my book Six Ways to Design a Face, which you, you can buy off Amazon, mm -hmm. and it's internationally published. It, it's you know, people who have jaw surgery, they, they buy that book. So it may open what we call the posterior coani, um, but all it really does is it stretches the soft palate. So the soft palate stretches out a little bit and it doesn't flap as much, but it doesn't open the airway behind the soft palate. So... Let's talk in analogies. We're better off to talk that way. If you've got a small upper jaw and all you're saying is that it's narrow, that's like you've got a little dog and saying it's short. Right? But 
you're not going to say a little dog's short because it's got short legs. You're going to say it's a small dog because it's got small legs, small body, small head, small tail. And if you're going to make that small dog a bigger dog, you've got to let it grow three-dimensionally. So it's not about expansion. It's about heightening and lengthening it as well. And the intimacy of knowledge of the anatomy that surrounds it is incredible. And so all of those structures, you somehow got to keep like furniture in a room. You don't want to throw the furniture away. You're wanting to make the room bigger to accommodate all the furniture so you can walk around the pieces of furniture. And that's, that's your airway, I suppose. The, the simple idea that you can just expand uh, is just a furphy. Mm -hmm. It's certainly part of the equation, but it's nowhere near the entirety of the formula. In an algebraic series, A plus B, B plus C plus D and a whole alphabet, expanding the upper jaw would be the Z. And that's the only thing that Dennis or orthodontist can do, but it is mm. entirely not the the, the the whole equation. So what would be some of the other dimensions that you might be able to affect as a surgeon? The A, the B, and the well, C? Height, height, width, symmetry. So there might be one nostril that might not be able to breathe as well as the other side. Yeah. And you've got two airway columns. So expanding something, you know, you, you think as you're pushing against each other that they evenly expand as well. That may not be the case. It may just that expands preferentially on one side and a little bit on the other. Yeah. So the control over that expansion. And, and when you're looking at an upper jaw and you're looking at symmetry, you might have one side that's up. And sorry, I'm just in the mirror here. So you might say, well, to, 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 to make it work, you do that. But the better way is just to split it and level one side and maybe widen it or widen it or tilt it or tip it just to, you know, give it evenness and symmetry. But that's just talking about the teeth and the smile. But that also relates to the symmetry, the air flows that, that sit above the upper jaw. Mm. You, know, you call them your nostrils. And then, of course, you've got the air passage. It's, you know, through the nostrils, lifting the nasal tip up a little bit, broadening the, the nasal base with the support of the bone behind it. You've got the whole upper jaw that's pulling the soft palate away from the back of your throat. And you want to stretch that so it doesn't flap and vibrate and produce that horrible <laughs> sound, you know. And that's right, right. But then you've got the next block, the next block, which is just behind the tongue at the level of the epiglottis. And when you're lying on your back, that's what's collapsing and, and blocking your airway. And that's why you're lying on your side with your mouth open, breathing, because you're trying to relieve the obstruction behind your tongue. The moment you're breathing through your mouth, which you don't know you're doing because you're asleep, right? The moment you breathe through your mouth, you're no longer breathing through your nose anyway. So always the fundamental thing that you've got to fix is that thing that's happening behind your tongue, which is related to your small jaw. You've got to fix that first. And or that's your primary driver. You've got to relieve that original obstruction. That's the thing that's been there since you took your first breath after you were born. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you just simply kept evolving and developing as the rest of you grew, it, it was always small relative to the rest of you. And then the secondary consequences of it, which is how your upper jaw is not grown properly, um, because you've been a chronic mouth breather, because you're obliged to breathe through your mouth because of your small jaw, the way that upper jaw is grown three-dimensionally has to be, you know, corrected three-dimensionally. Mm. 